The following program is brought to you by the last half donut at the Church Fellowship Hour. This partial pastry reminds you that if you want to be Midwest nice, don't eat the last half. Cut the half donut into a quarter and leave the rest for the dirty little boy coming in from playing outside. Hello, my brothers and sisters. How are you doing today? You're listening once again to St. Mark of Bemidji's Sunday Edition podcast. This podcast features a replay of our Sunday sermon, or on occasion, a sermon from another well sister church. If you enjoy what you hear today, you might also enjoy our weekday devotions, which you will automatically get if you subscribe to this podcast. Additionally, you might consider sharing it with a friend. Each and every podcast has a share link in its description, which can be found in the same podcast app you're listening to right now. I've tried to make the link to it obvious, and let me know if it isn't, or if you have any questions, or if you just want to say hi, at john.kirk at stmarksbemidji.org. Share God's Word because God wants us all to come to be with Him forever. Our sermon for today comes to us from St. John's Church in Wood Lake, Minnesota. It's based on this reading from John, chapter 16, verses 16 through 22. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. After this, some of His disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? And, Because I am going to the Father. They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly I tell you, You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. And now, Pastor Cowie will present our meditation on the reading for today titled, For a Little While. May God bless our time together in the Word. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. You have probably observed the phenomenon where time seems to pass more quickly the older that you get. When we were little, every year seemed like a lifetime. Even even a summer vacation seemed to last forever. Waiting until your next birthday was even longer. Then you get older, and and it seems like you just blink and another year has just passed by. And you wonder, where did all that time go? I think that has something to do with perspective. When you're young and your years are few, every one of those years is a larger proportion of your life. And and so what was one year to a four-year-old is a quarter of their whole life. But when you are old and have passed many years, one more year is just just a blip. So, what if your perspective was eternity? Perhaps that's why Jesus can tell his disciples in our gospel today and and to tell us that it will only be a little while and we will see him again. And it will be only a little while before our time of suffering, our time of sorrow, our time of waiting finally comes to an end. To us, it seems like a lifetime. Seems like like forever, but it's not. It's only a little while. I think it is with that perspective in mind that that St. Peter wrote to Christians who were scattered across Asia Minor in our epistle today. 
He, he bases his whole letter, this letter that we've been able to, to study together in, in, in Bible class recently, he bases his whole letter and this section in particular on their position as, he says, aliens and strangers in the world. He says you're like, you're like pilgrims, see? Travelers, exiles in a foreign land here in this world. But it doesn't look like that from our perspective, does it? Because we've lived here our whole lives. This is all we know. We have been born into this world, in this body, and this is where we will also die. But then here along comes into our world, into this life comes Jesus, who's not from here, though he was born here too. And he's not here now but has ascended into heaven. We are here, but Jesus says to us only only a little while. And he tells us where our real home is. Our real home is his home. It's where he has gone and where he has gone there to prepare a place for us and a place where he will one day, after a little while, bring us to be with him. This is not your home. Not forever. You are a stranger here. And so then comes St. Peter again, writing to Christians and and living in a time and in a place where, where it was becoming increasingly apparent that not everyone appreciates Christians. They had started to hear reports of, of Christians being ostracized, Ignored, outright canceled in the public square for their convictions. It was not so nice to be a Christian in this world. And they are feeling more and more like outsiders in it. And so Peter writes to them, I think also to us, to remember that you are actually foreigners in this world. This is not your home though you are here now for a little while. So what to do? Three things, he says. First, he instructs, he says, abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. See, most people assume that this this is home, this is it. This life, this world, and what you see is what you get. So your desires, the things that you desire and want, those are just your natural inclinations. And and we conclude if it's natural, it must be good. And so the number one objective in this life is for you to be true to your authentic self, your organic self. You must follow your passions and your desires and do what pleases you above all else. Make yourself comfortable. In which case, then, there is no need for salvation of any kind or for any word of God that tells you about it or repentance. It says to you, you are right where you belong. You are home. And you just just live your life. You live your life, which is just like the rest of the animals which you consider yourself a, uh, just a part of uh, the circle of life on earth. You live here, you die here. But if you're on a journey, if you are instead strangers and foreigners, if this really isn't your home, well, then you can't stay here. You can't stay put. You have to keep moving. You can't stop and settle down here and live like the inhabitants of this world. If you do, you'll never get home. Your natural desires are not good. They are instead sinful inclinations that, that attack you, that wage war against your soul, that, that they threaten to keep you from your real destination, your real home. And if you do that, wage such a war, be aware, if you abstain, 
you're probably going to stick out. And, and the pagans who live like animals are likely to accuse you of living wrong and thinking wrongly because you don't live like they do. But you're not from here. Don't behave like you are. Secondly, if you are strangers and foreigners, then, then one ought to ask yourself, how should a foreigner behave in a foreign land? I've never traveled out of the country, but I, but I understand that when Americans do travel abroad, everyone knows that you're an American. They can see it. Like it or not, you represent your homeland. A stranger in a foreign land is a representative of his home. And so he ought to honorably and honestly represent his home. As such, if you, if you are then not a conqueror or a, a colonist there in this foreign land, you're a guest. If you are a guest in someone else's home, you don't rule the house. But instead, you follow the rules, you follow the customs, the traditions of that home. If you drive in, a, in another state, you, don't, you have to follow the driving rules of that state or of that country. Back home, you might be the king of your own castle. But when you are a guest, you obey the rules of the house you're living in. This world in which we sojourn also does have rules. It has order. Of course, the order and the rules for this world are also given by the Lord God. The Lord God is king over all, and he has ordered structure for this world and this life that is by his design and is under his command. And that's why we hear St. Saint Peter write that this, the authorities instituted among men here in this life, they are sent by God to do his bidding, to punish those who do wrong and reward those who do good, to maintain law and order. Likewise, all order in life, according, including all of society and its structures for home and family, marriage for men and women and their relation to each other, is also by God's design for our good while we live in this world. Yet we are foreigners, strangers. Because you, as God's chosen people, as foreigners here, your real state, your real status in the kingdom of God is as kings and queens in that kingdom. In our home, there is no need for higher-ups or lower-downs. As Christians, in our true home, we live as perfectly free lords, subject to no one. In Christ, we need answer to nobody, perfectly free from all law and regulation. But we're not home yet. We're here, and order and authority are the house rules. Here you follow the rules. That means respect for those whom God has placed over us, even if we don't particularly like them, even if they don't do a good job. It means love for the brotherhood, even those we don't care much for. And it means fear for God and honoring the king. You represent your home. Your respect for the law and the Lord here shows your respect for the true king of all. And so that we are not obnoxious foreigners who have no respect for law, order, and love. Thirdly, if you are a foreigner, a stranger, a traveler, a traveler can expect that life on the road will not be as comfortable as life at home. If you want your most comfortable bed, your comfiest chair, stay home, right? 
You won't expect that every other place that you go will be as comfortable as a home. You can also expect that in a foreign land, strangers may be treated poorly for no other reason than that you are different. And that may not be right, but that's the way it is. If you were to become confused and, and think that this world in which we are strangers is your home, such treatment, unjust treatment, would likely become unbearable, intolerable. We couldn't stand it. But if you're just passing through, such suffering is just a part of the journey. This isn't home. You don't expect it to be. The suffering that you and I might experience here as Christians, as a foreigner, is only for a little while. We can't blend in and make pretend like this is our home and behave like the world around us. So we can expect it. It's only a little while, and whatever joy your tormentors might receive from oppressing you, that will come to an end. It's only a little while. But when your Jesus appears again, he will restore all joy to you, and no one will take that joy from you. You could try to blend in, to get comfortable, to have your joy now for a little while. Or you can suffer as a sojourner now for a little while and rejoice forever. So your perspective changes everything, doesn't it? Our whole lives in the grand scheme of things is really just a little while. Even the life of the church in these last days is temporary. And you and I, the people chosen by God and precious to Him, are in fact strangers here. Heaven is our home. But we live here now. That certainly doesn't mean that we disengage from the world that we live in. It's just perspective. It's how we look at it. And our perspective is true. This perspective shapes all our life here and now. It, it affects how we live. So we live here not like we're from here. We're different. And that will show. It shows in how we treat one another. How we love and honor and order and good order. We're good guests here. And we'll patiently bear the cross that Jesus lays upon us here, confidently that after a little while, he will take it away from us forever. You will see me, Jesus says. My friends, that's how you'll know your home. It's in him. And then you can rejoice. Kick up your feet. Rejoice forever. Amen. I sincerely pray that today's meditation on God's Word has enriched you. Didn't get enough of God's Word? Are you missing out on that in-person fellowship? We hold divine services right here in Bemidji, Minnesota at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday school and adult Bible study is also offered between our Sunday services at 9.15 a.m. We also live stream our Sunday divine service at 8 a.m. You can ensure that you are notified when a stream is live or a new podcast is available by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's easy to find by typing in St. Mark Bemidji in the search bar and clicking on the subscribe button. Want to listen to meditations the way I do every day? Subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Go to podcastindex.org and search for St. Mark Bemidji to find us. This is our fifth year producing this podcast, and there is a large archive of devotional material online available if you want to learn more about God and His Word. Visit www.stmarksbemidji.org or look in the show notes in this podcast for a link to this and many other meditations on God. If you have any questions or you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website, which is once again 
www.stmarksbemidji.org. May God bless the rest of your day.